Have you seen the price of power tool batteries lately? They are so expensive, so these knockoff batteries look very attractive because of the price. The question is, are they even safe? Well, let's find out. We'll short circuit the batteries and see which ones provide proper protection. Then we'll see which batteries go up in smoke trying to provide power to an angle grinder. Finally, we'll take the batteries apart and test the internal batteries. If you're trying to save some money, why not buy four of these LabTech batteries for the price of $22 each instead of spending $90 for one Milwaukee? It even says that it's tested by manufacturer to match and exceed OEM product specifications. LabTech claims to have a 6 amp hour battery. It claims to have short circuit protection. We're going to test that. The LabTech is made in China. And the LabTech weighs 651 grams. To compare the batteries, I went ahead and purchased a Milwaukee 175 watt power supply. Each one of the batteries will be powering this fan, which draws about 150 watts. I'll point the fan away from the camera and I added some streamers so we can see when the fan shuts off. And the LabTech is fully charged at 20.9 volts. And the LabTech is starting off at 118 volts, 1.22 amps and 138 watts. And the LabTech is still going strong at 16 minutes. And the battery made it to 25 minutes and 20 seconds when it finally gave up. The battery is down to 15.2 volts. At a price of $26 per battery is this Amatike brand. It claims that their batteries offer six different safety features. It includes short circuit protection and high voltage protection. The Amatike batteries are made in China. And the Amatike is very light at only 596 grams. And the Amatite just came off the charger and it's around 20.3 volts. The Amatite is starting off at 121 volts. And it's at 1.19 amps and 137 watts. And the Amatite is already out of juice at a very disappointing 15 minutes and 50 seconds or about 10 minutes less than the LabTech. At a price of $30 for one battery or $60 for the pair is this Tenmore brand. Tenmore claims that their batteries charge quickly. There's no information about this battery having short circuit or overcharging protection. The Tenmore batteries are made in China. And it's 663 grams for the Tenmore. And the fully charged Tenmore is around 20.5 volts. And right off the charger, the Tenmore is at around 118 volts. And the battery is still going strong at 16 minutes. And it's all over for the Tenmore at 21 minutes and 44 seconds, or about 4 minutes less than the LabTech. At a price of around $90 is this Milwaukee Red Lithium XC 6.0 battery. All the batteries we'll be comparing claim to offer 6 amp hours. Milwaukee claims their battery is a high output battery offering 50% more power and it runs cooler. We're going to test that. The Milwaukee battery is professionally made in Mexico by Milwaukee Tool. And a 6 amp hour Milwaukee weighs 1,077 grams. Right off the charger, the 6 amp hour battery is at 20.8 volts. And the Milwaukee is close to 117 volts at the start of the test. 1.24 amps and 135 watts. At close to 15 minutes, the Milwaukee is still holding up very well. And the Milwaukee is still going very strong at just past 23 minutes. And the Milwaukee is at 32 minutes and 15 seconds and still holding up very well. And the LabTech made it to just over 25 minutes, and the Milwaukee made it about 14 minutes longer at 39 minutes and 15 seconds. The genuine Milwaukee battery is on the left, and the LabTech is on the right. And the Milwaukee battery is quite a bit larger than the knockoff. To add a twist to this review, I'm also going to compare these knockoff batteries against a Milwaukee 5.0 battery that's about 5 years old. This old 5 amp hour Milwaukee battery has been charged and discharged hundreds of times. Both battery cases are very close to the same size. And a 5 amp hour Milwaukee weighs 733 grams. And the 5 amp hour Milwaukee is starting off at 20.9 volts. And the battery is starting off at 118 volts. And the Milwaukee is still holding up very well at 8 minutes and 42 seconds. And a 6 hour Amatite gave up less than 16 minutes, but the Milwaukee 5 amp hour battery is still holding up just fine. And the 5 amp hour Milwaukee has outlasted the Amatite and the 10 more and is still holding up. And it's over for the Milwaukee at 28 minutes and 40 seconds. And the voltage is down to 15.2. So the new 6 amp hour Milwaukee outlasted all the batteries by over 10 minutes. And the used 5 amp hour Milwaukee outlasted the three knockoff brands by over 3 minutes. A battery powered tool is only as good as the battery. Using this Milwaukee drill, let's go ahead and test the maximum torque in second gear beginning with the 6 amp hour Milwaukee. And the Milwaukee made very quick work of the 5 inch lag bolts and made it to 183 inch pounds. Testing the lab tech. And the LabTech gave up 40 inch pounds sooner than the Milwaukee at 143 inch pounds. Testing the Amatike. And the battery just can't feed the drill enough juice to keep it going. And the drill gave up very early at only 89 inch pounds. Testing the 10 more. And the 10 more is performing a lot better than the Amatike, and the lag bolt just bottomed out. 146 inch pounds is 3 inch pounds better than the LabTech. Let's go ahead and test the 5 amp hour battery. And the old 5 amp hour Milwaukee battery drove in the lag bolt all the way and made it to 175 inch pounds. So the 6 amp hour Milwaukee came out on top at 183 inch pounds, but the 5 amp hour Milwaukee performed almost as well at 175. 10 more finished in third at 146 and LabTech 143. Let's see if the knockoff batteries can perform just as well as the genuine Milwaukee batteries driving in lag bolts with an impact driver.
And the lab tech made pretty quick work of the lag bolt driving in the first bolt in 6.24 seconds. Compared to the Milwaukee drill, the impact driver requires a lot less current. So it seems like all the batteries should perform close to the same. 6.44 seconds. And the lab tech seems to be performing about the same as the first two attempts. And a 6.24 seconds on the final attempt with an average speed of 6.31 seconds. And the Yamataike has really struggled on the first two tests and has struggled in the first attempt at 6.81 seconds. And the Yamataike really struggled again on the second attempt. And it's about a second and a half slower than the Labtech at 7.74 seconds. And the Yamataike is a little faster on the third attempt at 6.91 seconds. So 7.15 seconds is almost a second slower than the Labtech. And the Tenmore has outperformed the Yamataike on the first two tests and is performing about the same as the Labtech up to this point. And a 6.6 seconds on the first attempt. And the 10 more is even slower on the second attempt at 7.12 seconds. So the lab tech is performing better than a 10 more at this point. And the third attempt is less impressive than the lab tech once again. And at 7.12 seconds for an average time of 6.95. Let's see how the old used 5 amp hour Milwaukee performs. And the old used battery is faster than the three knockoff brands on the first attempt at 5.72 seconds. However, it lost a little bit of ground on the second attempt. And at 6.34 seconds, which is almost as fast as the lab tech's fastest time. And the third attempt is faster than the three knockoffs once again. So the 5 amp hour Milwaukee moves into the lead over the knockoffs at 6.08 seconds. Let's go ahead and test the 6 amp hour Milwaukee. And the Milwaukee performed about the same as the lab tech at 6.24 seconds on the first attempt. And the 6 amp hour Milwaukee outperformed the lab tech Amakite and the 10 more on the second attempt at 5.72 seconds. And the third attempt is once again faster than the three knockoff brands at 6.03 seconds. So it's 6 seconds on average for the 6 amp hour Milwaukee. So the 6 amp hour Milwaukee barely edged out the 5 amp hour Milwaukee at 6 seconds. Of the three knockoffs, the least expensive lab tech performed the best at 6.31 seconds on average. Let's see how the batteries perform trying to keep up with this very thirsty angle grinder. I'll add 5 pounds weight on top of the grinder and I'll change out the flat disc between testing each brand. Let's test the lab tech first. And the lab tech is holding pretty good RPM, but this is a very thirsty grinder. However, a 6 amp hour battery should hold up fairly well. And the lab tech is already out of juice at a minute and 52 seconds. A new flat disc has a lot more grit than a used flat disc. So I'll go ahead and install a new flat disc between testing each of the brands. And the Emma Kite is really struggling. And it's hard to believe, but the Emma Kite has already given up in only 10 seconds. And I'm unable to get the grinder to power up again. Definitely not too impressed. And the 10 more does not claim to offer overload protection, so this should be very interesting. And the 10 more blasted right past the lab tech's minute and 52 seconds and is still chugging along. However, the grinder is losing a lot of RPM, but it's not giving up. And the grinder finally came to a stop in 3 minutes and 33 seconds. Unfortunately, this battery is not overload protected. And the battery is extremely hot and there's a lot of smoke coming from the battery case. Hopefully, we didn't run this battery, but I suspect there's been some damage. And the 5 amp hour Milwaukee is starting off at a very high RPM. While it is very subjective, the Milwaukee battery seems to be holding higher RPM than the 10 more. And the 5 amp hour Milwaukee is finished in 2 minutes and 42 seconds. However, the Milwaukee battery is not smoking like the 10 more. And the 6 amp hour Milwaukee battery is the last to be tested and 3.5 minutes is the time to beat. And the Milwaukee 6 amp hour battery is making a lot of RPM and seems very well designed for the grinder. And the 6 amp hour battery just blasted past the 10 more 3.5 minute mark. And the Milwaukee is finished in 6 minutes and 38 seconds. Very impressive. So the 6 amp hour Milwaukee battery lasted about twice as long as the second place finisher. And the 10 more voltage is down to just over 2 volts, which will definitely cause damage to the lithium batteries. I'm attempting to charge the 10 more battery on the Milwaukee charger. However, the red and green flashing lights indicate that there's a problem with the battery. If you're like me, you don't want a dangerous battery inside your shop or home. So let's go ahead and test the batteries for short circuit protection next. There are two metal conductors attached to the positive and negative contacts of the LabTech battery. I also have a current meter to monitor how much energy spike occurs when I short out the batteries. The lab tech almost immediately experienced a current drop after the short circuit. And there's a small amount of smoke that's coming from the battery. And the lab tech claims to offer short circuit protection and the lab tech made it to 112 amps before it powered down. And the lab tech battery smells very hot and it's showing one bar. And the Yamakite made it to 123 amps and the current is gradually dropping. And the current finally dropped to zero at almost eight seconds. Definitely not a safe battery in my opinion. And the Yamakite is smoking pretty badly, not good.
And the 10 more made it to 227 amps before powering down in just under two seconds. So the 10 more does seem to offer better short circuit protection than the Amatike. And the six amp hour battery made it to 390 amps and lasted about two and a half seconds before shutting down. Just like the 10 more, the Marquis shut down before things got out of control. I placed all the batteries on the Milwaukee charger and none of the batteries can be charged. So let's go ahead and open up all the batteries and see what happened to each of them. And the lab tech has a thin metal interconnect that's designed to function as a fuse. Fortunately, the interconnect did melt as designed at just over 100 amps. In my opinion, the lab tech passed the test, and the Emetite came dangerously close to catching on fire. Personally, I will definitely not have this brand of battery in my shop. Some of the batteries actually began melting and leaking. Just like the lab tech, the 10 Morse interconnect served as a fuse and it melted in under two seconds at 227 amps. And the Milwaukee also has an interconnect that's designed to act as a fuse and it worked as designed. The three knockoff brands use 10 18650 lithium batteries and the Milwaukee has 10 21700 batteries. I went ahead and removed one battery from each battery pack. And the lab tech's 18650 weighs 44.9 grams. And the Emetite weighs about 3 grams less than the lab tech. And the 10 more battery weighs 42.53 grams. And the Milwaukee weighs about 24 grams more than the heaviest knockoff battery. I charged all the batteries and all four batteries are fully charged and are very close to 4.2 volts. Let's first test the internal resistance of the batteries. Internal resistance is the opposition to current flow. And the lab tech has 12.9 milliohms of resistance. And the Emetite performed almost as well at 13.4. And the 10 more is at 13.1 milliohms of resistance. And the Milwaukee performed by far the best at only 5.9 milliamps. Let's go ahead and discharge the batteries at a rate of only one amp. Each of these batteries should easily handle up to 20 amps. At the end of the discharge cycle, we'll know the exact amount of capacity for each battery. And the test is finished and the results are very interesting. And the LabTech battery has a capacity of 2,082 milliamp hours. Not surprisingly, the Amatike only has a capacity of 1,520. And that's absolutely terrible. And the 10 more performed almost as well as the lab tech at 2041. And the Milwaukee makes over 1,000 milliamp hours more than the second closest competitor. Very impressive. So are the three Chinese knockoff brands lying to you about their capacity of 6 amp hours or 108 watt hours? Let's do the math. Well, first multiply the milliamp hours times nominal voltage and then divide that answer by 1,000. And for example, that works out to be 7.5 watt hours for the lab tech. And each of the tool batteries have 10 individual batteries. So each tool battery should deliver 108 watt hours. So that only works out to 75 watt hours for the lab tech and only 54.7 for the Amatike. 73.5 for the 10 more and the Milwaukee works out to 113. To drop test the batteries, I taped them to a PVC pipe to help control the angle of impact. All of the batteries made impact on the corner of the battery. I dropped all the batteries from 10 feet and all the batteries held up just fine. When it comes to tool batteries, I typically go with the philosophy of buy once, cry once, and for that reason, I really like the Milwaukee. However, there are some times when the knockoff battery is the way to go, and for that reason, I really like the Lab Tech. It is only about $22 per battery. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching, please take care, and I look forward to next time.